Welcome to the Painting Insights podcast. We have been working on something in the background. That's right. We've actually started a Patreon channel. For the last couple of months, we've had previous guests revisit the channel to give us additional content, everything from studio tours, sketchbook tours, talking us through the process of paintings and all kinds of additional treats, which you're exclusively going to see as a patron who supports the channel. So by supporting us on Patreon, you help the channel keep going. There's a lot of work put into this from the video editing to the sourcing of guests. So you really help us find those guests and to put the content out. And we have lots of uh, content planned for the near future. So the links for that will be in the description of this video and in the description on the podcast channels. And otherwise you can go on to Patreon and type in Painting Insights Podcast and support us that way. Thanks very much, enjoy the video. Okay, so would you mind introducing yourself for the audience, please? Hi, everybody. My name is Floyd Strickland. I'm an artist uh, based out of Los Angeles, California. Um, I've been into art my whole life. Uh, I've been blessed to be able to professionally, you know, just paint and, and create for the last maybe 10, 15 years, uh, definitely the last 10 years. Um, and uh I uh, started off as um, mostly a lot of drawing uh, ever since I was little, really. Um, but I want to say about 12, 13 years ago, I started painting a lot more. And um, I was living in Memphis, at Memphis, Tennessee at the time. When I moved back to L.A., um, I really started taking the art, you know, uh, production more serious. And, um, you know, really the last 10 years has been... You know, it's been a real blessing just to be able to to, to do different shows, um, create uh, public art uh, for um, areas that I grew up in and, uh, you know, just really having fun with a lot of the work that I'm doing. Um, I do have um, I didn't go to school for art. I don't I don't like to say I'm self-taught because I don't really think that anyone's really self-taught, but um, I, I didn't go to college um uh for art uh well i was there for like a semester or, and then I, I left and um actually got a degree in public administration and business administration and i was building schools and renovating schools and stuff for a while um but a company i used to work for before i started to really focus on um you know being an art professional so uh um, I have a lot of different backgrounds in terms of not just art, and I use all those backgrounds in my art, I think. Well, with you mentioning that, actually, I'll ask you now, because when I read in on your website about the building of schools, I found that really interesting. Can you expand upon how that influenced your messages and your kind of uh, your subjects in your artwork? Because obviously there's a, a real connection there with your experiences. Yeah, so I was blessed to be a part of the of um of a group of the organization I worked with where we were renovate and like uh, um, really just go to a lot of areas that didn't have the best facilities, uh, school facilities, and we were able to go and renovate the school facilities. Sometimes we would, you know, it was a few ground up builds that I was a part of um, and I was able to, you know, pretty much go different areas of the country and see a lot of different, um, you know, cultures, um, a lot of different uh, um, circumstances. But I think one thing that always kind of stuck with me was the children. Um, and because of that, you see a lot of kids in my paintings. Um, I just always wanted to like just me as a child kind of seeing myself and those little kids a little bit um, because it don't matter where we were at, you know, when you in a certain circumstance, um, uh, you you deal with similar issues. Right. No matter what culture, when you in a, a, a you know, a kind of a inner city or impoverished circumstances, you deal with certain issues. And, um, you know, I just wanted to start creating work just to make sure that those people had a you know some type of representation in art and uh 
those kids can see the art and, you know, kind of be inspired by it. Or um, a lot of kids are artists themselves and don't really have that that person that to connect with, to understand, especially a professional person to connect with, to understand, you know, how that artwork, artwork works or, you know, how do they get into certain things? So I thought it was important to kind of always reach back to like my childhood and, you know, um, um, a lot of the kids that are growing up now, because it's not really, I'm, I'm 40 years old, but it's not really that different. You know, it's not, you be, it's, it's not too much has changed, you know, so unfortunately in a lot of situations. So um, it's good to kind of see, like when I paint somebody, see they uh, they see um, how proud they are to be in that painting or how, um, you know, really how inspired the, the kids are sometimes. So um, like it was always a connection with that because I really did love the work I was doing. You know, I really did love creating building because it's to me it's all creation so if i'm renovating something it's still a creation you know if i'm helping build something it's still a creation it was a lot of work you know but it was still creating something so i, I love to be a part of that and i love to share those experiences with the, the children and stuff like that so um that was all like i always say that was my favorite day of the year was when the kids would come into the school and they see all the stuff we put together and they they see you know and they they'd be so bright-eyed and so happy that they facility is now like standard, uh, standard art, you know, so, you know, I, I connect, you know, I always connect, kind of reach back to those experiences um, with my art. So and so it, it was kind of a natural thing, really, more than anything else. It was it wasn't something that was forced. I naturally just progressed. And I didn't even realize that I painted so many kids um, initially. I was just working, you know, and, and then after a while, I kind of made that connection. And it was like, it was really just organic. Mm. Well, I remember reading in the about section how it's, you you were struck by the lack of confidence you can see in black and brown kids, in yeah. sports, which is going to be endemic all over the world, especially when there's a mixture of cultures, there's a lack of representation in certain sectors. So your role is so important for those kids to see themselves in you, in a professional person who's striving and, and kind of successful at this and it's so imaginative i can imagine some of the backgrounds are really imaginative as well which is going to be amazing for the kids is that part of is that purposefully reflecting that or is that just happenstance that you actually inject these patterns in the backgrounds of these studies of uh, not studies but these uh, subjects of you know young kids and you'll have this kind of bright patterns behind them and just beautiful backgrounds that seem like the imaginations of children's exploding behind them. Is that purposeful or is that kind of incidental or? I, I think it's, 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 it's purposeful um, because I think sometimes each painting, you know, it kind of like a lot of times I would start off with the figure and I would figure out the painting based on the figure, if that makes sense. I would like figure out the background based on the figure or I would create a world around a figure, you know? So um, and a lot of times, a lot of the paintings, like a lot of the, the, the especially the larger scale paintings, um, when I start painting, I kind of figure, fit, I feel like that's the end of, of, of a journey, you know, with, with that individual work. It'd be sometimes that some of the images that I finally, when I finally finish it, you know, I have been drawing or, you know, kind of tinkering with that, that image for, you know, a year or two, maybe, you know, it, that happens sometimes because a lot of my paintings still base start off with drawing. Like, you know, I don't really show a lot of my drawing process, um, uh, like online and socials, but mostly everything I paint started off as a drawing. Um, and so I could be working on the drawing for a couple years sometimes. And I finally figure the image out that, you know, how I want to see it, you know, so, I draw a lot. So a lot of the the backgrounds, a lot of the imagery, it could be a lot. And sometimes, well, a lot of my paintings are actually my two kids, my son and my daughter. So, you know, sometimes when I'm focusing on a particular idea, um, I would, especially with my daughter, um, I would like kind of the background would be focused on how her character is and some of the things that she likes. So, like, for instance, all the everything I do with all the stuffed animals and stuff like that, that really comes from my daughter, because my daughter, you know, she has 
She has so many stuffed animals. Like I can't even go in her room. It's just they everywhere. It's probably my fault, but because <laughs> I keep buying them. But um, so most of all that stuff is her is actually her actual toys, you know, and her actual stuffed animals, and you know she has them everywhere. So uh, that's kind of how that came about when um, that particular series of paintings, because I was like, I want to paint something that was specifically for her. And paint something that specifically showed kind of her her character, her um, you know how fun she is um, because she is really a fun person. Even at nine, eight, eight years old, she's about to turn nine, and um, you know, so I thought that was a good way to kind of show how how she is. Um, so it could a lot of it sometimes is based on the the, the person, especially if it's my kids. I kind of know how they are, and sometimes it, it can be a series of painting that I'm working with, like a. Like I got a series of painting with which my son is in, and it has him and a lot of hyenas. And that paint that series actually started because um, you know, he probably don't even remember this, but he was probably about five years old and he was like infatuated with like lions and hyenas and stuff like that. And so I was just drawing stuff, and it was really mostly just to draw stuff to impress him. You know, like I'll oh, look at this son, and you know. Um, and it kind of, you know, took up a life of his own and he loves them. You know, every time I create one, I try to put a print aside so I can put him, uh, put it in, up in his room. Um, but so it, it the, the backgrounds is, it, it's a various, you know, reason. Sometimes it'd be for, if I'm doing a particular show, the theme of it, I, I kind of incorporate that theme in the background. Um, uh, so it, it really just depends on. Uh, it's various reasons for the background, you know, it's, it's just various reasons, but it all starts with like, it, it does start with the imagination and uh, um, because I want each painting to kind of feel a little different than the last one. I don't really want to try to replicate, like create a formula and just kind of replicate that formula. I, I want the paintings to somewhat be unique, you know, so. Yeah, it comes to life there with a bit more personality. Exactly. And I feel like, the background is the best way to to make that because if you remove the background it's like i'm painting you know kind of the same person over and over again so mm -hmm. you know the background is kind of how to make that unique in my in my opinion mm. now, i was interested when you unless i misunderstood i thought you said when you start the painting that's the end of the process because the concept and preparation can take a year or so i mean is that, is that sketchbooks or is it loose but i mean how does it how does that come about? What's that about? Well, usually like, like for instance, um, I'm working on the show now that's uh, um, opening in April, I believe. And um, so a lot of the ideas for the show, it's something that I've been drawing for, for a, a few, almost a year now. So what happens is I, like, I knew I had to show it by almost a year in advance. So when I come up with the idea for the show, I don't like I, I still sketch every single painting like I don't it's not like I just take a picture and then paint the picture or have a subject a life subject I I, I really sketch out each painting you know like even like, I don't have the figure yet but I will sketch out how I want it to look before I even take the photo for the figure so I mean so I know exactly how I want the painting to look so by the time I'm like by the time I'm actually painting it and like drawing it on a painting, like, to me, that's the end of the whole process of that painting because it could have been something that, you know, I've had a few paintings where um, I was like, actually, just recently, I recently did a painting that I was working on for two years and not the actual painting, but the actual, the drawing. Like I just painted it in December, but I was drawing on it for two years, you know, because even with a lot of the hyenas, that I will paint like most of them aren't actual pictures of hyenas It's something that I kind of created on my own so it was a couple things that I couldn't get right so I was just working on the for about for about two years and it's funny because you can tell because like when I finished painting it I realized how young my son looked my son is in the painting and I was like that he looks like a kid like a baby but so this two-year-old image that I was drawing around I'm like I've been working on this for two years so um you know, uh, so that in my mind, like when I'm painting, like that process is and I, I paint pretty quickly, too. So, you know, that process, when I get to the painting part is to me is, is I'm at the finish line at that point.
So is it thumbnails that you draw in, and is it, or does it get quite large? I mean, what's what are the pros that you draw several times? Or it starts off as a thumbnail. So yeah. what happened? Like you, I used to draw mostly just like on paper, pencil, and mm -hmm. I and I um re well not recently. It's been about seven years now. I've been drawing. I've been using my iPad and my wake up tablet to draw. So it can be just one big palette, and I can start from a thumbnail, and I can just keep expanding on it and expanding on it. So I, I do a lot of stuff digital. I still draw like paper and pencil or pen and paper, but a lot of the when I'm drawing for the painting, a lot of it is is starting off digitally now. Really, I was forced to do that because I had a a, a leak in my um, in my garage and I had a big stack of drawings and. It's, it just rained right on the drawings and I lost so much, you know, work. So because of it, so I was just like, you know, I, I really did it out of necessity. Like I'm about to just switch to digital, but I actually like, you know, um, this was years ago now though, but I actually, I do prefer the digital for the painting preparations. But in terms, if I'm just drawing something like for art purposes, I still use pen and paper or uh, a pencil and paper. But when I'm creating something for uh, um, a painting, I usually either most likely use my Wacom tablet and I'm, I'm drawing from there on Photoshop and I'm creating that way I can have like different references up that I'm drawing at the same time. So it just makes the process a lot more easier, you know, in terms of uh, creating the image um, and a lot, just a lot quicker too. So, um, so I can start off from a thumbnail and I can build upon that idea within the same kind of uh, um, the same canvas, digital canvas, I should say. So. Yeah. Now, I'm going to move on from this, but for, I just want to ask one more follow up is because it's for me, the preparation is quite an interesting part. And I imagine yeah. that when you when you're drawing with a pencil or ballpoint pen or whatever you're using, it's more shape composition. Whereas when you're doing digital, does that also give you the opportunity for color composition or do you keep it? Yes. Black and white? Yeah, you do color composition. So, a lot of times for my digital work, I would uh, I can create a whole I create a whole digital painting to try to figure out the colors, even sometimes, and this is like, I don't, it's a trick I just start recently using. I think I saw it on YouTube or the Instagram or something where I would take a photo of the painting. Like say, if I don't know the color of the background, I would take a photo of it and I would just use the digital, you know, to figure out the color. I'm like, oh, I think I saw a, a, a Instagram post about it. I'm like, why well, didn't I think of that? I could have been, <laughs> you know, versus like, you know, di doing different paint, like, I don't know. And then covering up. So, um, yeah, I've been, I really, maybe about 10 years ago, not about seven years ago, I embraced the idea of digital work a lot mm -hmm. more. And um, I don't really do a lot of digital paintings other than, you know, for my preparation for the painting versus, uh, versus like, like doing it for uh, art, um, like, you know, artwork itself. So, but yeah, yeah, I do use it for that purpose as well. Yeah, I can imagine it's, it really is a time saver and it's a bit of a hack. It really is. Yeah, working uh, and money because you can, you know, don't have to buy the paint. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, one of the it's a big feature on this podcast. I say it's a big feature. We ask every guest this, and we're kind of segueing into it naturally. Do you have a set color palette? And if you do, can you take us through what those colors are? I don't really have a set color palette. Um, when I'm painting a portrait, I do use. Okay, well, when I'm painting any type of skin, I, I have a set color palette. Mm. You know, the background, and everything, I really know. Even though I use a lot of pink and a lot of like magenta, but um, um, with skin, I use red oxide, um, um, titanium zinc white, uh, burnt umber, uh, uh, yellow ochre, um, and I, I just recently switched to Indian yellow. Oh, it's been a bit of a feature on this channel, Indian yellow. Oh, really? <laughs> magic color. I've heard yeah, that it's really... a white, and then it's kind of, you know, explodes into this magic. Yeah. Exactly. Like, exact, and, I, and I just recently switched over. I'm like, I love this. So I recently switched to that. And I use, um, I've been using a lot more magentas, uh, a lot more magentas. I, 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 I stopped using so much uh, uh, crimson. And my skin and my palette, and I've been, I switched to a lot magenta, a lot more magentas, and I also use um, 
cat orange light sometimes too um to get a because like especially when i'm doing like a, a darker person it gives that vibrancy in their skin so the mm. magenta and that cat orange like makes it just create this real vibrant color especially in the like the shadow area so um that that's my pretty much my my color palette that uh that i have for uh skin tone and depending on if it's a lighter tone person or darker tone person I would you know, like replace the burnt um, umber for uh, raw umber, um, you know, and I would probably remove the uh, red oxide. I see. So, what was the effect with the crimson? Would that be would that be flatter, or would it kind of not have the blending? It's, it, you know, um, with the crim the the crimson, it was like I just felt like I had a a, a warmer a warmer orange color with magenta you nice. know if it makes sense it, it it just seemed warmer to me with crimson it um it, it's still warm and it's crimson um but it's 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 sometimes too it can get too more too much purple you know it can get purpley a little bit you know <laughs> that's not a word but you know it can it can you know especially if i'm like mixed because i mix most of my own blacks Mm. So when I'm mixing it with black, sometimes it you know I can hit a blue or something like that, and it, it don't it don't exactly do exactly what I want it to do. So I just thought the vibrancy and the magenta, um, it it just I just like it a lot more. I like the way the the, the skin tone looks a lot more. Uh, it's kind of hard to explain, you know. It just when I see it, I I know it, you know, mm. and it gives like this a better peach color too. You know, and I think that's what it is too. So you get uh, in a highlights, you get a better like a peachy color versus something that's more reddish with the with the crimson. So are we talking for accuracy or for kind of to serve the image? Well, to serve the image, to serve the image. Because sometimes, honestly, when I'm painting, like a lot of my paintings, I don't care about the accuracy as much as it's doing what I want it to do. Yeah, you know. So, you know, I, I can have a, a photo reference and I'm not really trying to replicate the photo reference because mm. sometimes I might change the shadow. I might change the highlight color. So I'm not really, you know, the, the reference is there, but I'm not looking at it as much as because um, it kind of goes back to the idea of background, because if I want to have the, the, the figure set into the painting, mm. you know, I might have to change the highlight. You know, I might have to change the, you know, slightly change the shadow. So um, especially that, you know, the, the ref reflective light colors that's bouncing off and I could have took the picture, you know, outside and the lighting was completely different. So, you know, I, you could always do certain things with Photoshop to try to change the lighting on the image. I don't really know how to do all that stuff. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. you know, so I, I know how to do it, you know, just on a canvas, though. So, yeah. you know, a lot of that is, is really what that is. So being kind of, I mean, like you said, kind of pseudo self-taught, because as you said, none of us are truly in a bubble or in a vacuum. We're kind of influenced by things. Is this, can it's a wealth of knowledge and you can see it in the work. There's no kind of, this one's a bit loose. It's all very tight, and very precise and just beautifully done. Really well executed. I'm a real admirer of the work. And Thanks. I'm wondering, is this something that you built in Memphis or was it when, you know, when younger than when you moved to Memphis or when was it's this? Both. Oh. It's both really, because when I started, I mean, I've been painting for a while now, um, mm -hmm. you know, so it, when I, I went to art school for like a semester and, um, I really just didn't like it. It was, I didn't think that, I, well, I didn't really think that, I didn't understand the economy behind art at the time. So I didn't really understand like, you know, the different type of things uh, that you can do to make money with art. So, um, you know, I just felt it was an opportunity to go to college to do something else to have, you know, get a lucrative job. So that's why I, kinda, I left, even though my passion was always art, but I figured I can do it on my own. So it was a lot of trial and error, obviously, because I wasn't guided um per se by a teacher but i i did study you know i did I, I used to do a lot of studies a lot of old master studies i i love sergeant so i would you know you know paint i love another artist uh, uh repping Ilya repping oh, so i would do a lot it. of yeah. exactly so i do a lot of people don't know about repping so i do a lot of repping well at least in the u.s so i do a lot of repping studies and um you know really just based off you know learning and then honestly you know um you you can do you have a lot of resources online now mm. you know not so much when I was you know twenty years ago 
Um, but you know, I get a lot of art books and stuff like that, you know. So I was always in practice in terms of like, you know, it just wasn't, you know, this 20 years ago. So it wasn't the online form that you can kind of present yourself to. Mm. Um, so I just did a lot of work then. Um, and um, I got I did fall out of practice for a while after my sister passed away. I stopped paying really doing any art for almost a decade. Um, but, um, you know, it's like a bike, you know. So when I went to Memphis, um, I start working again. And a lot of that had to do with just because, like, that was the first time that, you know, I'm from L.A. We just, you know, it rained a little bit out here. That's about it. You know, I didn't have to deal with, like, snow. <laughs> and it snowed in. So I had to deal with that for the first time. And, you know, you stuck in a house for a week. You know, I don't. I'm going to have to start drawing. I'm going to start, you know, and that's what happened. I would start drawing. I would start, you know, painting and um, what well, really start drawing. And then I just bought a lot of supplies. And then when we moved back to L.A., um, that's when I really, 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 really got back focused on my art. I always made a promise to myself. I said, when I finish my master's, I'm going to get back into art. So when I finished my master's degree in, in Memphis, and I made I, I kept the promise to myself. I said, when I finish my master's, I'm getting back into art, you know. Um, so that's what really what it was. It was a it's a, it a lifetime thing. And the the practice and the, the study of other artists actually taught me a lot. And I'm the type of person that has to learn by doing something. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not afraid to fail. You know, I know, you know, a lot of times you start working on a painting. Sometimes it's going to be bad. You know, it may be bad a lot of times, especially in the, the initial so I, I didn't I wasn't afraid to fail. And I had a pretty good job so I could lose money. So <laughs> I had the expendable cash. I know I wasn't gonna sell all this stuff. So I would paint stuff that I had no business painting, like four, like six, seven foot paintings. I had no business painting this stuff in the garage. But I didn't care. It was more of the, you know, I'm painting on this thing for seven, eight months, but it's more of me I learn by doing, you know, so that's how I, I taught myself a lot. Of, well, I, like I said, I don't even like to say I taught myself. I learned from people who already done uh, done a thing. So, and I figured if I could start off big, I could go back down small, and it'd be easier. That that's not that actually wasn't true, but <laughs> actually wasn't true. But that's in my mind at that time. That's what I thought, you know. So, yeah. well, I mean, it sounds like you did earn a lot of that. As much as you can say, you know. It was helped along the way. It's still, it takes effort in several. I mean, practice is one thing, but to be self-critical and to know where you're falling short is something which some people lack. It doesn't matter how much they practice. Yeah. They don't seem to be able to reflect clearly on what their weak spots are. So to see someone successfully execute style and, and kind of uh, work as grand as what you produce, you can see that the work and effort has been injected in for a good amount of time. So it's really admirable. And I can imagine, I mean, I was going to ask you about the scale of your work. Is it all large pieces? Is it exclusively large scale? Um, most of them were. I just start working some, a little bit smaller. So, like, for instance, small to me at one point was still kind of small to me. It was like 36 by 48 is small to me. Like, that's tiny. <laughs> that's little. Like, that's it. It's, I knock this out. But um, so I... I it, I struggle with smaller paintings because um, I always want to put things in the painting. You know, I always want to like these backgrounds and all this. So for me, like it was actually very difficult to go to a smaller size. And I think it's because how much I practice on a larger size. So when I see an image, it's, it's like I can't just paint the image. You know, I, I got to I want to add to it. I want to create a world behind the image. I want to, you know, position this person into, into something, you know. So, um, you know, what happens is that, you know, that lends itself to larger paintings, obviously. You know, the smaller paints, is, it's not as easy to do. So do that. So um, but I always say when I, I want to be like Sergeant, just do like these little landscapes when I get older, you know, <laughs> get away from all the big portraits or do these little landscapes. But um, yeah, so it, it is it, the, the, the most of my paintings are fairly large. You know, mm -hmm. most of them are fairly large. 
um, especially like the ones that if the more in the detail in the background, probably the larger the paintings. So a lot of them are fairly large. Yeah, I mean, it works well. You can see that it would be striking in a gallery to see large scale work like that. It's beautiful. And I, I'm wondering, I mean, it's a bit of a broad question, but what would you say as a piece of advice to someone who wants to paint and say they do paint, but you're a working professional artist? What's a good piece of advice for someone who's painting and wants to um kind of get themselves out there or make connections or, or whatever it is or to kind of be more successful in their practice what's something that you would give it advice to to someone um i think you gotta have look kind of like thick skin you know you gotta be able to 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 take you know constructive criticism um and i think you just have to work a lot you know i, I think that's something you know that when i come across some artists I don't think they work enough, you know, and I think that's something that I don't think people understand. Like, you know, I work a lot, you know, a lot. You know, I, I had a few people say you produce so much work. It seemed like you always do. I'm like, yeah, I paint probably 12, 13 hours a day. So I work so much that, you know, it's a, you just got to work, you know, but you do have to be able to network as well. But when it's time to work, when it's time to like kind of lock in and focus on, you know, a, a group of paintings and stuff like that, you just got to you got to work a lot. Also, I think it's helpful to paint like you already in that show you want to get into, you know, you have already the mindset that you're going to get to that place. And paint like it, you know. I, I tell even my son. My son is twelve. I tell him all the time, like you, you know, you don't get older and become something. You are that thing already. Like I don't think that when I, I knew I wanted to be an artist when I was five. So when I was five years old, I, you know, I was drawing. I was, you know, start painting like around nine, ten. I knew I wanted to be an artist when I was five, six years old. So I didn't, I don't think I became an artist as an adult. I was an artist when I was five, six years old. So, you know, you, you already that thing that you want to become. So you got to prepare like that in a sense, you know? So, um, you know, if, if, if a lot of young artists, you know, if you producing one or two paintings a year, you know, I don't know if that's enough work to get to where you want to get to, you know, I don't know if that's enough, you know, and I'm not even talking about like the studies and stuff like that. Like that's different. But if you're producing your own work, you know, also I think that's important to produce your own or be be yourself, put yourself in your art. Um, don't uh, you know, replicating somebody's stuff is okay to learn, but you know, I would you still want to try to create something that's that represents you. Um, and, um, I think, uh, those things that help, you know, you move your career further. And this is, it takes, honestly, some of it is luck, you know, but it, I think it's easier now. Um, uh, well, I don't know if it's easier or if it's harder because you have social media that makes it easier to be known, but then it's more artists that's on social media. So I don't, I don't know if it's easier or harder. I don't know, but yeah. you can't have your, your, you can't find, you know, a lot of more art uh it's more easily accessible for collectors and curators and galleries they can they can find your work and um so but i think the number one thing is just to work like actually work you know and work like it's like a job you know i work like a nine to five job you know i, I wake up take my kids to school and i work a set schedule every day you know, most of the time, more than the time I give myself to paint, because usually when my kids go to sleep, I, I'm back in the studio probably like one, two o'clock in the morning a lot of times. So, you know, just to work really and work like it's like it's a job. Like you can't, you know, think that you're going to be able to um, get to a certain place, whatever that may be, because everybody had different goals. But if you're not producing the work. Well, you perfectly answered something that I was going to ask, which is what time does your working day start? And it sounds as though as soon as the kids are dropped off and you're able to get back home to the studio. Sometimes before. So it, it really depends on the night before. So mm -hmm. for instance, like if I'm exhausted and I actually do stop working like at nine o'clock, 
I, I never sleep that well. So usually I wake up if I go to sleep at 9 p.m. I'm probably going to wake up at like 3 30, 4 o'clock mm -hmm. um, in the morning and I will start then. So I wake up at 3 30. I will probably start working like around four and uh, um, work until seven when I have to take the kids to school and then come back and work until um, I have to pick them up. <laughs> you know, my kids are they do have a lot of extracurricular. So a lot of times my schedule is around their activities, their after school activities. And um, but even then, usually they go to sleep at eight thirty nine o'clock. And I usually kind of, you know, come back and do uh, my, my, my studio is based at home. So I usually come back and and do um, sometimes two, three more hours. Sometimes if, if I got a show, I'll probably be up to like two o'clock. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it yeah. makes your time all the more valuable, which is why I very much appreciate you offering us. Oh, no problem. <laughs> no problem. And honestly, I, I really enjoy painting. You know, so it's not like I'm, you know, it's work, but it's not work. You know, it's yeah. like I'm, I enjoy the process of of, 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 the, of painting. I enjoy the process. So it's not like I'm, you know, usually I'm listening to a podcast or listening to some music or something and I'm just working. And mm -hmm. at that point, I'm, it's almost like muscle memory. I'm, I'm, I'm hearing what the people saying. I'm listening to the music. And I'm painting, and I'm not really thinking about the paint as much anymore. Like I just can kind of go. So. Nice, that's good. Uh, I mean, with you mentioning uh, you've got a show coming up, what's mm -hmm. the considerations you need to consider when it comes to prepping a show? How many pieces do you, you know, do you have for the show, and what what are the considerations as far as themes or conversations with the curator, or what what's going into the show that you're preparing at the moment? Uh, luckily, the last two, the last show I had in this particular show, the the curator allowed me to kind of do whatever I, you know, wanted to. It was a, like uh, um, this particular one. It was uh, they wanted more smaller work versus like large work. So that was pretty much the only uh, restriction was to not make it too big, you know. Um, and um, and the number of paintings, it was between twelve to fifteen paintings. So um, that's about it. You know, usually they they you know he let me you know, kind of do with whatever I want to do. I, I just usually present it to them a few months in, in advance, the idea I have for it. And, you know, he gives it a thumbs up and we good to go. Um, in terms of the preparation, um, usually you do have a, a, a good, a fair amount of lead time. So I'm thinking about what I want to do. Usually it starts off about just kind of me like writing some ideas down or, or you know, a lot of it is probably reading you know, reading some things, you know, or, uh, you know, based off something that um, I experienced recently or, so, you know, whatever, maybe, or even sometimes consuming other art and, you know, figuring out um, and not necessarily paintings or, you know, you know, it could be movies or documentary, stuff like that. And, you know, kind of figure out the ideas based off that. Or if I have an idea, I, I go research that idea and try to you know, come up with some images based off uh, the research, you know. So a lot of it is just like kind of starting off broad and, you know, right. And I'm the type of person that like I can get an idea for a painting and I text it to myself or I, you know, do it if I'm, you know, have a pen and a pad, I do a quick thumbnail and, you know, take a picture of it, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I do that a lot, you know. So the, when I when it comes down to, you know, the actual work for the painting, it starts off, you know, not, it don't always start off as drawing. It starts off as uh, sometimes starts off as research um, for each particular show. And each particular show, I kind of, for me, I've been trying to build off the last show. So it's kind of this, not necessarily a running narrative, but a, a certain theme that, you know, kind of encompasses, you know, the, the show it depends on how many I have in the, the times period. So I recently just had a show, and um what was that september so this is kind of a continuation of the idea i had in september you know so um it really depends on the space um the area the show is going to be in um you know so uh to to really get a good idea of what i want to do for the show you know 
but the lighting, it could be, you know, you want to visit the space before you have the show there. So, you know, and uh, a lot of that has to do with what I'm going to produce for it. And you know this space already. This is space you've exhibited in before. You're yeah, right. before. I haven't exhibited because they have different rooms. So I haven't exhibited in this particular uh, um, uh, room, um, but I've been there a, a, a gang of times. So uh, I know how the space is set up. So I kind of, I've been, I already know what, you know, but a lot of times if, you know, for artists who are exhibiting in the space the first time, um, you know, a lot of times the, the curator or the, or the gallery can send you the you know, the elevation of the space, the dimensions mm -hmm. of it. So, but it, I think it's always better to go see it you know, and try to go plan out, you know, even if it's just the sizes of the paintings, um, but you can, you know, plan that out and head, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know about you, when I go into a gallery, there's, there's a couple of galleries which I'm exhibiting in at the moment, and I'll always look for what I call the prime real estate that I want to exhibit a piece in. So I'll say, yeah. <laughs> you've got a stone wall at the back. That jumps out. I want a piece on that stone wall. Mm -hmm. And I'll kind of negotiate with the uh, owner and say, like, you yeah, know, for sure. Is that so? Have you got us? You know, do you have certain pieces where you think I want the visitors to kind of go in and then? Oh yeah, for sure. Them the back, you have the yeah, idea. for sure. I I did a show about a year ago, mm. and um, at a gallery, and uh, it was one particular painting that I actually didn't even put. I didn't even make the painting for this show, but they had the painting. It was just like a painting I had. I you know I really liked the painting, and I just you know I gave it to him, whatever. And um, for them to, on consignment. And I was like, can y'all put that in that window? You know, and, you know, so it was it um, it was like perfect, though, you know, and I didn't even really think about it until after I did all the paintings for the show. And I was like, y'all still got y'all got the other painting. Can y'all put that up, too? And it was like, oh, yeah, that's perfect. So, no, I definitely, definitely, you know, even when I'm first starting with a gallery, you know, it's just like, oh, I can't wait to show right here in this space. So, yeah, now yeah. I do that as well. Yeah. <laughs> I do that as I'd well. Glad to know it's not just me because I feel a bit. Cheap. Uh, <laughs> I do that as well. For yeah, sure. yeah. Well, I have to admit this is a point where, as well, we like to try and help promote the artists' uh, works. I mean, how many places are you get, uh, exhibiting in? Is there? Do you have a couple of different galleries where you exhibit, or is it just one for the time being? Or, um, right now I have work and. Uh... I have work in Detour Gallery in New York. I have work in ACH Gallery in New York. I have work in um, Think Space out here in Los Angeles. And I have work in um, in Art Angels out here in, in in Beverly Hills. So right now the show I have a I have a uh, I'm just, I have a small piece and uh, uh, a group show at Think Space right now, and I'm preparing for a show at Think Space in April. Oh, fantastic so i mean so, cause i'm going to put links in the description of this video so that people can go and see it and if they're okay. in the area because we obviously have international viewers and listeners to absolutely go and support and view your uh exhibitions because uh it will be definitely a spectacle you can tell by the quality of the work so aside from that, no of course i mean what's the online platforms that you use, obviously, I, I found you through Instagram and I've had a look at your website. Is that the two places that are best or have you? The two places. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the two places. Mostly. Well, I'm really active on Instagram um, for the most part. I'm, you know, um, I don't really I don't really have any other social media. Just Instagram. I don't have like TikTok and stuff like that or, mm -hmm. or, or YouTube. Um, I just really on Instagram. Um, it's just a you know a better platform for me for art. You know, just to put pictures up and stuff. So yeah. um, that's that's the best way. And I'm pretty friendly. Like you know, anybody can. Mostly people DM me. I'm going to answer most likely. So yeah. you know, yeah. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> It may take a little while to get to it, but, you know, usually I answer. So if anybody ever want to even just ask me, any, you know, questions are about um, process and stuff like that. I always love to answer those questions. Mm, fantastic. And is it you sell work through your website or do you sell it on Instagram as well? Or is that both, oh. both yeah, through the website and through Instagram, both. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you sell prints as well or is it all originals? I have I have I have a few prints I usually do about two or three prints a year. Um, I don't do that many prints, but um, I do have a few prints uh, that's on the website. 
Okay. So you yeah. can go to my website and just click store. You can find all the prints. Yeah, fantastic. Well, as I said, all the links will be in the description of this video. So I definitely encourage people to check it out. But thank you so much for being a guest on the podcast. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, to I appreciate it. it. I enjoy it. Well, we hope you enjoyed that episode. If you can support the podcast by leaving a like or a comment down below, that would really be great. But what we'd really like is if you're able to leave a review on the podcast channels, wherever you listen to it or download it, because that helps us get spread around the internet so that more people have access to us and able to see what we're making. Also follow us on Instagram and we'd really appreciate it if you like and engage with our posts, help get the podcast better known. Thanks for listening.